He's well known in the community as a pastor and firefighter, but today the Central Kentucky man went to court to answer to charges he sexually abused two girls. A convicted killer gets out of prison early and his victim's widow wants to know how it happened. Hear from her now at four. A lot of windy and warm weather across central and eastern Kentucky. Now we track the possibility of strong and severe thunderstorms. That's just ahead. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. It's the first full day of winter, but it sure doesn't feel like it. Temperatures are in the 60s this afternoon. Here's a live look at downtown Lexington, where we're close to a record high, and this warmer air could lead to storms. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast, and Chris, it doesn't look like we're going to break the record today. Yeah, we're going to come up just a little shy of that record high this afternoon. Nonetheless, it almost has a humid feel across the entire area, and humidity levels are going to come up. It's a springtime pattern that will eventually lead to some strong and severe thunderstorms potentially coming up later tomorrow and into tomorrow night. Let's talk about where we are right now. Most areas are still into the 60 to 65 degree range this afternoon into central Kentucky. It's a lot cooler in the west with only low 50 showing up. Got a little weak boundary that is situated across western Kentucky. Defender radar network early this morning, late last night, obviously booming showers, heavy rain producing uh, thunderstorms out there too. Nothing really to speak of. There's the front to the west of us. That's going to lift its way back to the north. See this big storm system coming out of the Rocky Mountains. That's an area of low pressure. That is our Wednesday severe weather maker for the Plain States and in to parts of the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee River Valley, and that may include the Bluegrass State. So focus of the forecast. Yes, we have the potential for records, but really it's all about the threat for severe thunderstorms and very heavy rains. Jennifer, I'll show you why local high water issues may eventually become a problem when I come back with a full forecast here in 15 minutes. We'll see you then, Chris. A Central Kentucky pastor accused of sexually abusing two girls faced a judge for the first time this morning. Steve Williams has resigned as minister at Bowen First Church of God. Police say he also works as a school bus driver and a volunteer firefighter. Williams' lawyer entered a not guilty plea on his behalf during the hearing in Powell County. Mark Barber is in Stanton with the latest in our top story at four. Steve Williams, attorney and longtime friend, says he's known the minister about 25 years. And in that time, he's built up a reputation of integrity and trust that does not match the disturbing allegations of sexual abuse. Williams did not say much during his video arraignment this morning. His attorney spoke for him, entering a not guilty plea for his charges of first degree sexual abuse. According to deputies, the 52 year old minister touched a girl inappropriately during a church field trip and abused a second girl in the church. He resigned from the Bowen First Church of God on Friday. The pastor was viewed as a public servant and community helper because he worked as a Middle Fork volunteer firefighter and he was a bus driver for Powell County Schools. He is now in the Clark County Detention Center. Uh, Deputies think Williams is being held there because he had a jail ministry at the Powell County Jail. His attorney, Jerry Patton, says that's who Williams really is, someone who's always willing to help, not hurt others. The charges don't fit this man's character. I'll just tell you that up front. Um, he has an excellent reputation in the community. He's been a pastor for a number of years and been involved in civic events. I've been kind uh, to everybody that I know of up there. Uh, never heard a negative thing said about this fellow. Williams will be back in court next week for a preliminary hearing and a bond hearing. We asked the minister if he wanted to talk about the case from jail, but he did not. In Powell County, Mark Barber, WKYT. Williams' attorney tells us his family is standing by him. We're told Williams moved from Prestonsburg to Powell County a few years ago. A convicted killer denied parole earlier this year is now out of prison. A jury convicted Mike Ryder of shooting 29-year-old Jimmy Music in Lexington in 2011. The state parole board deferred Ryder's parole request for two years last February, but yesterday he was released on mandatory re-entry supervision. Music's widow says she had no idea Ryder was going to get out of prison. There was no warning. There was no... In anything, it was it was an email that said he's been released today, and if you fear for your safety, call 911. That's what we got. 
Ryder received a 10-year sentence. Leslie Music says he served four years and eight months. You'll hear more from Music on WKYT News at 5. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Jennifer. The attorney for a Pulaski County police chief facing criminal charges wants those counts thrown out. The Gossett headed to court to answer the theft and abuse of public trust charges. Gossett was indicted earlier this month, but his arraignment scheduled for today was delayed. His attorney says the allegations, which according to the indictment occurred more than six years ago, are vague and unclear as to what he is actually accused of doing. The way the indictment reads, it could be as simple and as simple as failure to return a rototiller to uh, Science Hill. It could be theft of cash. It could be uh, uh, bank fraud, fraud. I have no idea. That's and that's that's why I filed a motion for bill of particulars. If the judge doesn't grant our motion to dismiss the indictment as facially defective, then I've asked the Commonwealth to explain a couple different things. I need to know what it is he's accused of taking. Chief Gossett was suspended with pay after he was indicted. We'll have more on this situation ahead on WKYT News at 4.30. A school bus driver involved in a deadly crash will not face charges. A Whitley County grand jury decided not to indict Amanda Wolliver. Police say that Wolliver's bus hit and killed Jonathan Chatham in March right after she dropped him off at a stop. Whitley County Schools say that Wolliver had been driving a bus for two years, 120 miles a day, incident-free. Her CDL, training, and physical were all up to date. We'll have more on this story ahead on WKYT News at 6 o'clock. A train wreck caused a problem for firefighters battling a mor morning house fire. Rather, a train track did. It happened on Miller's Creek Road in Estill County. The back of the home was engulfed when firefighters arrived. They say it took about an hour to put it out, and they had to make a call to CSX Railroad to do it. No one at the house was, uh, no one at, was at the house, which was destroyed. Firefighters are not sure what caused the fire. You'll hear from the fire chief on that coming up on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thank you, Sam. We are tracking breaking news out of Frankfurt in the battle over same-sex marriage in Kentucky. Governor Matt Bevin has just ordered the state to prepare new marriage licenses that do not include the names of county clerks. The move is in an attempt to protect the religious beliefs of Kim Davis from Rowan County and other local elected officials. In a statement we just received, the governor said he has issued an executive order directing the Kentucky Department of Libraries and Archives to issue the revised marriage license forms to all county clerks. The order comes after Davis, the Round County clerk, spent five days in jail for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl's journey from Taliban prisoner to a man freed during a prisoner swap arranged by President Obama took another turn today, with Bergdahl in court facing charges of desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. Emily Schmidt has the latest on the court martial arraignment and what lies ahead. In military terms, Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl appeared for an Article 39A arraignment hearing. In translation, his first hearing for charges which could put the 29-year-old in prison for life. Bergdahl said little, mostly, sir, yes, sir, in response to the judge. Sergeant Bergdahl deferred all of these decisions to a later hearing. Bergdahl said more publicly in interviews with a filmmaker, which are the basis of the serial podcast. He said he walked away from a combat outpost in Afghanistan in 2009 to try to bring attention to what he called poor leadership in his unit. The lives of the guys standing next to me were literally, from what I could see, in danger of something seriously going wrong. The Taliban captured and held Bergdahl until President Obama secured his release last year as part of a swap for five Guantanamo Bay detainees. Since then, the Army has debated what to do with Bergdahl, ranging from no jail time to the general court martial, which was recommended December 14th. To uh, military investigators during the interrogation. Military experts say Bergdahl's words will be closely reviewed. Inevitably, he's saying things that are going to be construed as admissions that are going to hurt him. In short, Bergdahl's recent words could be used against him instead of the 2009 actions Bergdahl says he had hoped would send a message instead. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. 
Bergdahl's next hearing is set for January 12th. He's currently on administrative army duty in San Antonio. An 18-year-old Montana man is charged with threatening to shoot a boy who posted plot information about the new Star Wars movie. Arthur Roy is in jail, charged with felony assault with a weapon. Prosecutors say Roy became upset and threatened the boy after he shared details on Facebook about Star Wars The Force Awakens.